Hi everyone, I'm Shauna and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about five categories of things that I would describe as little luxuries that are worth the money to me. In my last no buy update that just went up not too long ago, last week, I talked about the fact that my personal pendulum has swung from an over shopper to complete frugality. I, before my no buy, was that over shopper who could justify everything, overspent on just about everything, and then during the no buy, felt like almost everything was an extraneous expense, and when I was buying something, it kind of had to be the cheapest that it could be, or if it wasn't the cheapest, like there had to be a really clear reason why it wasn't. Like it was sustainable in some kind of way or small business, something like that. And so during my no buy year, what happened was I feel like I sucked out all of like the fun and joy in life and some of the, yeah, I removed a lot of the things that made me happy and made me, made me joyful because I labeled them as an extraneous expense or if I didn't remove them altogether, I got the cheapest option available which didn't really make me happy either. I call these items little luxuries because they all in some kind of capacity in a given year do fit in the budget and some fit in more than others, but they're not the least expensive option and I have to maneuver or like massage the budget a little bit to make them fit in. So the budget can be maneuvered to accommodate these items, but they're also not the most expensive thing in their category. So the first thing I wanna talk about is coffee. I get so much joy out of a great cup of coffee. I drink my coffee black and I have for a long time, at least five years, if not like maybe six or seven. Drink my coffee black and I use a French press, which in my opinion is like the best way to make coffee. Um, anyways, I love the taste of the coffee and when you drink the coffee black, you get the true notes of the coffee. I even worked at Starbucks for a few years, many years ago, and like my family is just a coffee kind of family of two separate family members who work at different uh, coffee companies. My brother in particular is very knowledgeable about coffee and I learned some basics when I worked at The Bucks. So I have some basic knowledge about coffee, but it's not necessarily the knowledge that matters, it's the joy I get when I drink a good cup of coffee. And I know what I like, you know, I like a dark roast and there's nothing more joyful to me than like <laughs> waking up and brewing that cup of coffee and like smelling it in your home. It's kind of an experience, but the coffee has to be the right kind of coffee. So my personal sweet spot is about $20. The coffee I have right now is the Cafe Verona from Starbucks. I have been loving the absolute crap out of this coffee. It's really good. Oh, I'm just smelling it. Ooh, it just, oh, lots of joy there. So this has been my recent bag. This came in just under $20 and I actually got a gift card from my friend Lara on YouTube and I put that towards this bag of coffee. Anyways, um, $20 is kind of the sweet spot for me because it allows me to get a higher quality coffee and I consider Starbucks to be higher quality and it's not just buying from Starbucks. It that kind of budget allows me to also buy from like higher end brands. So one brand that I've been looking at lately is, hold on, I'm looking at the name. It's called Birchbark. They're a Canadian owned brand and they're fair trade and it's, it's owned by indigenous peoples and a portion of all purchases go back into indigenous communities. That sounds kind of awesome to me. Um, so they're a brand I've been thinking about ordering from, but this is like the little luxury to me because there are certainly coffee brands that are much higher, 30, 40, 50 dollars a bag, even higher. There's really kind of specialty coffee shops out there and specialty roasters that exist. I don't quite go that far. I also don't drink like the five, six dollar bags of coffee. 
I've done that. The cheaper options generally aren't as strong as I would like. So I'm also often like using a lot and I like richer kind of bolder flavors. So even if, I'll put out there, even if some of this is in my head, it kind of brings me joy. So having this like ritual that I really love to me is kind of worth it. And if a $20 bag of coffee every six weeks brings me a lot of happiness, $20 is in the budget for me. So I kind of love it and um, I'm happy to spend that kind of money. The second related product is tea. And so one of the things I like about a brand like David's Tea, this is the brand that I do buy a lot of my tea from, not everything. I still do buy tea from, you know, the grocery store. I really like a loose leaf tea for the fact that I also like my tea really strong. Um, and so I can put in as much as I like. I think this, I think on the bag or the box that it came in said that you get about 20 um, cups. I don't, but for me, David's tea is definitely like a little luxury. It's probably double the price of what you would find in the grocery store, but it's not nearly the most expensive tea on the market and they often do have sales. What I love about David's tea is that there's so many different flavors that you just can't find at the grocery store. And so it kind of opens up a lot of opportunity and a lot of flavor. And I'm much more of a coffee drinker than I am a tea drinker. So a box of tea will last me a long time. Sometimes I go through phases, but I really like the be I really like to be able to brew it at the strength that I like and then have a lot of opportunity to try different flavors. It's a little bit more expensive, but not super expensive. And I really do like the way that the tea tastes. This one has been one of my favorites. It is the vanilla chai. Um, I'm when it comes to coffee, I'm not so much like Starbucks specific loyalty and tea. I think I'm more loyal to David's tea than Starbucks only because I think that there's a lot of, there's a lot of great companies out there that make coffee that are accessible. Not as many loose leaf teas, teas that I've come across. It just seems a little bit more harder to find. And then David's tea is also like the most accessible. Next up is stationery. And I don't think I'm alone in this either. Um, by stationery, I think there's like stationery has used in both narrow and broad terms. I'm talking all things like paper products, journals, pens, all of that uh, kinds of materials. I'm just gonna show you a couple of different examples of some things that I have around here. This was like a book that I got <laughs> custom made a couple years ago or last year it's like it's half of it is lined and then there's like some social media stuff near the back um anyways this is from plum papers and i also bought an agenda from them which i'll talk about later um i love a good i love a good journal I got two here. This one has to be at least 10 years old. I have bought so many journals over the years and put them in all kinds of places that like I've lost them. And when I moved, I finally gathered them together. I think I have nearly 10 different journals. And I mean like actual blank like notebooks. I have another one here. Um, and then I also love a good greeting card. I have this little box set here that has a couple of um, different designs on it. There's a fourth one. And also some pens. Let's put these down. I had a three pack of pens. This is one of the three. My favorite, I tried to buy them again, but they I couldn't find them. Um, I also have this little pack. It's like a pink, a lavender, and a black. They're soft touch. They write really well. Now, all of these things kind of represent a lot of my interest in stationery. I get a lot of joy out of 
want a pen that writes well but also looks really beautiful and then you put it in a notebook it kind of creates an experience and one of the things that i will spend more money on are things that make me feel like i'm getting an experience or are enhancing my experience that is definitely subject subjective um, but to me, there's just something really beautiful about sitting down to write in your journal with a really beautiful pen and it kind of makes me more inclined to journal as well. I'm also left-handed and if you're, if you're a lefty, you know the absolute crapshoot that it is about finding a good pen. So many of them smudge. I basically through all of school had that nice black smudge all the way down my uh, pinky and a lot of the you know big pens they're kind of cheap they smudge and like they break super easy plus here's here's the thing about a nice notebook or a pen when you have invested in something and I'm not talking about a consumable like I bought a pack there's six six different pens they're about $16 for the six pack when you have pens or not just pens, when you have something that you care about and you've invested a little bit of money into, you want to take care of it. Whenever I've had like a big pen, like we all loan them out to friends or you borrow it from your friend, you lose them all the time, like you don't take care of them. I don't lose <laughs> these pens. I know where they all are. And so I'm more inclined to take care of these things. Uh, the notebook situation was I needed a place to store them and then they got stored here, there, and everywhere. But I think the point still stands. I also really like a nice greeting card because the blank birthday cards have saved me money where I'm not buying a $5 like Hallmark card every time it's somebody's birthday. My Nona is the exception. She will always get the Hallmark birthday and Christmas card. This is this is my nona but when it comes to somebody in the office even like my mom or my partner or like a friend you buy a pack of cards cheaper than always buying the hallmark cards which i feel like is the option and also there's i also love a good thank you card and when you have some in your possession you're more inclined to use them and I love giving out a thank you. I love telling somebody that I care about, not just thank you, but like, I appreciate you. And I'm more, uh, I'm less stingy and less judicious about how uh, often I appreciate others if I just have a pack of thank you cards hanging around. Now, this little set here, there's 20 cards in it and it's $15.95, full price. I got a bit of a, a discount on it. So, this is like, oh, I think that this looks really nice. It's from Papyrus. It's not the fanciest card out there, but like, it also feels nice. To me, it feels expensive. And I think that they're super cute. So I get joy looking at them and giving them to other people. And I think that they're beautiful where somebody would appreciate getting them as well. Okay, number four is, is also related to the stationary game. It's a planner. Now, my, I have come a long way with the planners. Back in the day, like 2014, 2015, I bought like a $50 Erin Condren planner that like with shipping, with conversion was nearly $100. I've also bought a plum paper planner after a couple of years of buying, um, I can't remember what the brand is, but I think it's like Create 365. Um, those are about $20 each. And then I bought the Plum Paper Planner because you could customize it. They had an academic planner and you could put like five or six categories. And so I bought that the year I was doing my comprehensive exams. So I had one category for each subject and then I had one for Italian for that exam. And then I had one for teaching and I think one for like everything else. It was way, super overkill because the only thing I was really doing was reading. It just wasn't, it just didn't make a lot of sense. It was a wasted space. It wasn't really uh, like a good use of space. So I purchased this one last year. This one is really nice. It's $22. Um, 
this is like random page um march of this year um so you have like that weekly spread and then down here is like to do and notes this i'm glad i did not uh spend a lot of money on a planner for 20 and 2021 like that kind of academic school year my mind still thinks a lot in the academic year and like that's when you get a new planner that's the way i like it so i, I did get a new one i think that this looks beautiful gold here really nice and simple design um and so i like a i like a paper planner because that's how like i think i use these mostly for to do's i also like the monthly calendars which is really great for um for planning out like my youtube videos or my content and I appreciate a paper planner. And I think a beautiful one is worth some money, but not the 50 or $100 worth. I recently bought this one. This is the Legend Planner Pro. It's brand new. Um, I haven't actually written in it yet. This one is undated. This one was $39, so double the price of that one. And I'm still thinking about it. This one has a lot more reflection built into it than, than any of the other planners I've had before. So it's all about like, what are your goals? How can you achieve your goals? Goal setting, like reflecting on your month, those kinds of things. I love a good reflection and I'm kind of like in a point in my life right now where I'm just like trying to get it together and this reflecting kind of makes me feel like I have my shit together. I think a planner that is like and or beautifully designed, well, beautifully designed and or has reflection or like good components built in is worth the money to me. I'm not as much this kind of electronic planner. It took me a long time to get used to and even liking ebooks especially for school i do some some things electronically and that's also because my school supervisors meetings happen like in google calendar so i've adopted some of those things but like my day-to-day -day is on the paper and if this is like a tool that helps me feel productive and helps me be productive i'm all about it i'm gonna give you a six bonus one but before we get there number five is gym clothes my budget for gym like for gym clothes and i'm specifically talking about leggings and sports bras leggings is like 40 to 70 dollars and sports bras is probably like around the 50 dollar mark is where most things come in 30 to 50 but things are usually closer 40 to 50. that doesn't make them the most expensive most like aloe yoga 165 dollar pair of leggings um, so it's not like top tier again it's like this middle ground and for me a legging is super important for leg day um, I gotta be able to have squat proof leggings there's nothing more embarrassing to me than like somebody seeing your underwear at the gym when like you don't want them like you don't want to expose your booty to other people I want a legging to fit well because listen guys i feel like i think my body like is very curvy for like my size and height and like gym clothes are like the clothes that, like make me feel like the most confident about my body shape and like i've been like a lot of women out there like feeling insecure about my body like having a thick thigh i got a big booty and i think like in day-to-day -day clothes that's not as obvious as when i go to the gym and like i want to feel confident going to the gym and the gym can be like a really a really like awkward or uncomfortable place like if you don't go there a lot or you're new to the gym and like i want to have confidence in the gym um i recently started going back to the gym like only in the past week and I kind of forgot how like testosterone-y like co-ed gyms are with like the man's like dropping their weights and grunting. I kind of feel like a lot of 
men like in their 20s and 30s like intentionally make the weight area like uncomfortable for women um so i mean that's another discussion but i want to feel confident at the gym i want to feel good about myself i don't want to worry about anybody seeing my undergarments and even with sports bras i need that padding and like i don't like to have different levels of sports bras I want to be able to just pick one out of the drawer and it'd be good for any kind of activity whether that's running or yoga or weightlifting i want like i want it to work for that i don't want to see any nipples coming through like i don't i don't want that i want to feel comfort comfortable and confident and i think that working out can be a really vulnerable thing for a lot of people myself included going back to the gym for the first time was like kind of an uncomfortable experience like i don't have the confidence that i did when i left like two years ago um and this is a different gym too i'm going to talk about the gym and um uh, my next no buy update because that's just brand new in august but i hope you can understand what i'm saying trying to feel confident and comfortable when you're working out especially when like you're jumping back in and i want to like the way that I look. So the leggings are the most important for me, especially for those leg centric activities. And you don't want anything to be kind of like too tight either. But I'm also like not into like the gym shark stuff where it's like trying to sculpt your butt and like my butt does not need sculpting. So I will pay more money to have that peace of mind with my leggings and my sports bras. And they all work. I love, I love all the ones that I have. The last one is dessert. Your girl is a sweet tooth. I love all kinds of desserts. I have eaten cake for breakfast if it's in the fridge like since childhood. I'm that kind of girl. And I love... I love a great dessert and sometimes like you know donut from Tim's is great it's great but I also like going to a bakery even like you know the Longo's bakery section or the one at Fortino's you know those are fine um, getting a cake getting a cupcake getting some macaroons or macarons um, I think those are different things but I mean macaron macarons anyways these things are a little bit more high quality you get usually a little bit of choice than you would if you were just kind of going into like that you know how a lot of grocery stores have that like dessert area but it's like stuff that they've brought in um there's not the same amount of choice usually there's not cakes there or cupcakes you might find like more like brownies or cookies and like i love me cakes and cupcakes and you know pastries love those kinds of things they're totally worth the money to me they bring me joy and i'm not gonna lie over the weekend i bought myself a small cake and i ate it over the weekend that is not an every weekend kind of thing but it's like such a freaking joy to like buy a beautiful freaking dessert or even like going to a cafe and buying yourself a cookie or a scone um I think that's awesome and then you get choice there too and it really you know makes me happy it yeah it makes me happy and like literally feels like i'm treating myself and if buying yourself a couple of zeppeli a bottle of wine at the end of the week if that's gonna get you through it do it treat yourself man like that's <laughs> I'm getting very hyped about this. I love a good dessert. And I think dessert is always worth the money. I don't think you can ever go wrong on dessert. Love it. That's everything. I definitely have more that I could talk about things that bring me joy. And the bottom line for the things that are little luxuries to me are things that bring me joy in some kind of way even if it's just like a mental game and maybe not actually reflecting in reality but it doesn't matter because i'm not hurting anybody i'm just bringing joy to my joy to my own life and there isn't budget to buy all this stuff all the time but there's a budget to buy most of this stuff some of the time or most of the time 
so if you like this video and i'm happy to talk about more little luxuries in a different video let me know what what things you consider to be little luxuries in your life i would love to hear it um thank you so much for watching and hope to see you again around here soon bye